You don't hear anything, Peter. Welcome back. Today I will recap a 2023 American horror thriller film named Cogwa. Before we start, it is a request to please like and comment on the video as it will help us to grow our reach. At the beginning of the movie, we see Peter, an eight-year-old child sleeping in his room. Suddenly some noise wakes him up, so he looks back, but he does not see anyone there. He tries to go back to sleep, but shortly afterward, the sound is so loud that it scares him, so he runs to switch on the lights of his room. He then notices that the noise is coming from behind the wall, so he goes there to check and knocks on the wall. However, he gets spooked when he gets the reply of his knocks. He goes to his mother and tells her that he heard something. She brings him to his room and checks the wall, but she doesn't hear anything there. She tells him that this is an old house, so there are bound to be bumps in the night. She then tells him that he has a great, big, beautiful imagination, and all those scary things are just in his head. The next day at school, the principal introduces the children to their substitute teacher Miss Devine. Later, she finds Peter in the class during recess time, and he tells her that he doesn't like recess. She says he can stay here and help her with the Halloween decoration. Suddenly he gets scared of a spider, but Devine catches the spider in a glass and helps him release it out of the window. That evening, he asks his parents Mark and Carol what he is gonna be for Halloween. Mark asks him if he knows the old house down the end of the lane with the boarded windows and tells him that a few years ago when he was born, the little girl that lived there vanished on Halloween. She went out trick or treating and she disappeared. Carol says it was a traumatic event for everybody in the neighborhood, and she personally doesn't like remembering it. Peter asks her if he is going to disappear, to which she says they would never let that happen to him. Now later that night, we see a bump on the wall, as someone is watching over him. Someone then calls his name and asks him don't tell him, but he gets terrified and calls his dad. Mark comes there and asks him what's going on, to which he says he heard something again. Mark checks there and says he bet it's rats, but he got something that will take care of that. Mark pours rat poison over the wall, but Peter is not happy when Mark tells him that the rats will die if they eat it, so Mark explains to him that sometimes, they have to make tough decisions to protect their family. Later, at school, Divine notices Peter drawing something, due to which she gets worried and goes to his house with it. She introduces herself to Carol, and says she just wanted to come over and check on him personally. Carol says she was a teacher herself before she became a mother. Divine then shows her that drawing, and tells her that the children were drawing for Halloween, and while other children painted monsters and witches, Peter painted this. Carol says this is embarrassing, and tells her that Peter has an overactive imagination. He still wakes his father and her up in the middle of the night with all of his little flights of fancy. She then goes in and asks Peter about the painting but Peter stays quiet. She asks him why he is asking strangers for help, to which he says he is not, but she is. Later that night, the voice asks him to wake up, and as he wakes up, she tells him not to be scared, as she just wants to talk. Peter says he is imagining her and she is not real, but she says maybe, maybe not, but it seems to her like he could use a friend. However, if he doesn't want one, she will just leave. Peter tells her not to go, and they can talk. The next day at school, Peter makes jack-o'-lantern, and he tells Divine that its name is Hector, and she tells him that this one is her favorite. Brian sitting nearby overhears them and he does not like it, so during recess, he pushes Peter, causing him to fall, and then he smashes his pumpkin by jumping on him. Later that night, the entity asks him why is he crying, to which Peter tells her that Brian shoves him down every day. She tells him that she was afraid of something like that, but she believes in him, and she bet he is strong enough to stand up for himself if he just tries. The next day, Brian comes to the class with a pumpkin for Peter, and he says sorry to him. Now after school is over, the voice tells Peter to make Brian afraid of him, and he has to push back. Peter follows him and pushes him down the stairs, but gets spooked to see that Brian's leg is broken. Now we learn that Peter has been expelled from school, and Mark asks him does he has anything to say for himself. He says he didn't mean for him to fall down the stairs, to which Mark says he doesn't understand where this kind of behavior comes from. Carol tells him that Peter painted a child asking for help, and Mark says she is only telling him this now. He asks Peter why would he draw a picture like that, to which he says because he really hurt her. Mark tells him that he is grounded and he is going into the basement, and then he moves the refrigerator behind which is the door to the basement. He then brings him into the basement and asks him to sit there, and Carol tells him that they are doing this because they love him. Now after they leave, Peter tries to talk to that entity, but when he does not get any answer, he starts crying. The next day, the principal asks Divine if she went to a student's house, to which she says she wanted to make sure that Peter was okay. He asks her if is he showing up with bruises, 
Does he wet himself? Or is he talking about sex or other things a boy his age should know about? To which she says no, and the principal says then there is nothing they can do. She tells him that there is something off about his mother, to which he tells her that there is a child that disappeared from their neighborhood years ago, and something like that would make any parent overprotective. Meanwhile, Peter finds an underground secret chamber in the basement, in which a strange doll is lying. Later, Divine writes her phone number on Peter's math quiz and then she visits his house with it. She gives it to Carol, and then Mark then also comes out and Carol tells him that she is Peter's teacher. He invites her in, and offers her a seat, and Carol hangs the sheet on the fridge. He then gives her coffee, and Divine notices that he is bleeding, to which he says he is just doing some remodeling. She then says she is sorry about what happened, to which Mark says no apology necessary. She asks them if they have any idea where Peter will be going to school, to which he says he will study at home, as Carol is the best teacher he could ever have. Divine says she thinks given his behavior, he might benefit from an environment more suited to his needs. They say they are not going to give their son away, and family is what he needs. Divine asks them where is he, to which Mark says he is grounded in his room, and she can't see him, as he doesn't think it's appropriate. She says she just wants to say goodbye, to which Carol asks her what is her interest in their son. Divine says she wanted to make sure he was alright, to which Carol asks her if she thinks Peter is in danger. Mark tries to calm her down, and during this Peter comes upstairs and knocks on the door and screams for help, but Mark tells Divine that she should better leave. Now as she is about to leave, she turns and asks Mark what the banging noise is, to which he says it's the washing machine. That evening, Carol brings pumpkin pies for Peter and tells him that he can come out now. She then gives him a bath, and Mark asks him if has he had time to think, to which he says yes. Mark asks him about what, to which he says about how he needs to grow up, stop acting out, stop telling lies, and Carol says no more nightmares. They say they are very proud of him, and things are going to be different from now on and he won't be going back to school any longer. Later that night, Peter goes to the wall and knocks on it, and requests that entity to talk to him. He gets a reply and she says she was worried about him, to which he tells her that his mom and dad locked him in the basement. She says he has to be careful with them because they are not what they seem. Peter says he wants to see her, but she says no, as she has been here too long, and he would not like the looks of her. He will scream and get them caught. Peter says he won't, to which she tells him that there is a hole behind the wallpaper. He peels off the wallpaper and finds the hole behind it, and throws his ball inside it, and soon after, he gets spooked by seeing that entity there. He asks her who she is, to which she reveals that she is his sister. She had to wait till he was big enough to move the clock that hides the door and help her escape to leave the dark and the wall. Peter asks her to stop saying she is scaring him, to which she says he needs to be scared, because mom and dad are evil, and now his time is coming. Later, Peter hears someone knocking on his door. He gets up and looks towards the door, and sees someone trying to open the door. However, when the door opens, there is no one there. Only then he sees his mother coming out of the bathroom and the lights of the house go off. We then see the mat on the floor spinning, and his dad calls him and he sees him standing in a corner of his room with a creepy smile on his face. He then says look what he has done to his mother, and Peter sees his mother standing at the door in a demonic form. She starts running towards him but it gets dark there and then she appears again and jumps on him, and Peter wakes up the next morning and Carol says he was screaming and thrashing around. She calms him down saying it was just a bad dream and then asks him what was it about, to which he says he doesn't remember. Now that night, Peter asks her sister, that if they keep her in their room, then how she is talking to him. She says she scratched and clawed her way to him, mom and dad hate her, and once they have had enough of her, she is finished, they will kill her, and they will put him in the wall. Peter says they wouldn't kill anybody, to which she says they already have, and he needs to see what's buried in the garden. The next day, Peter digs the garden, and he gets spooked to find a human skull there, but only then Carol watches him from his room. However, before she could come out to him, he buries the skull again, and when she asks him what he is doing, he turns around with a pumpkin and says he is thinking of carving it. Now that night, his sister tells him that it was Halloween before they locked her in the wall. A trick or treater came to the door, so she asked for her help and she saw her, but they killed her, and she doesn't want to end up like that girl. Peter says he is getting her out of there, and then they are going to run away. She asks him how, to which he takes out his math quiz and says he thinks he knows somebody that can help. He goes to his parents' room to use the phone and calls Miss Divine. He tells her that he needs her help, but only then he hears some noise and finds her mom standing there behind him. Divine call back, but Carol picks up the phone, and Divine tells her that Peter just tried to call her. Carol says he did, and he was just telling her how dearly he misses his teacher. 
so she said just give her a ring and tell her himself, but unfortunately his shy streak seems to have gotten the best of him. She then disconnects the call and says he did a very bad thing by calling a stranger. She brings him to his room and says she is disappointed with him, and only then she notices the peeled wallpaper. She goes there to check and finds the hole there, and she leaves there in fear. She asks him what did she tell him, and only then the clock rings. She says it doesn't matter, and whatever happens now, it will be his fault, and tell him to wait until his father gets home. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.